here. I know, I know for that trade, we were waiting for the price to break below uh, $17.25, followed yeah. by a four hour candle close. Targets at 22 with a stop loss at 15.50. I know recently Palantir just had that, uh, which I know you don't really, I know you don't follow the news as much, but they just had that big uh, $480 million army contract. Everyone's talking bullish about Palantir. I remember you yeah. uh, at one point were saying something about a possible bull trap. So I'm curious to see what uh, your opinion is here. So I think that Palantir is also just like uh, Robinhood in an uptrend. However, I think that the uptrend on, on Robinhood and the targets are more realistic than something like Palantir. I think that even though this is bullish, the way that we have gone up here, right? So if I add in a very simple indicator for a second, um, the volume, uh, let's see, visible range volume profile, that shows me basically big areas mountains in the in the chart and also gaps so all these gaps that it's very easy to to move back down now if i even just remove that to me it doesn't look like i want to now enter a long position on palantir and the main reason for that is because well we've now recently again made a higher high but it could come down lower and if we enter a position long say we enter a position long here right now and we're already in our Robin Hood long as well. Say the market comes down. Now we are in two losing trades. And if we are careful, right, if the market goes up, well, Robin Hood is probably going to do well. And I think outperform Palantir percentage, well, potentially. Uh, but if it comes down, well, maybe we get stopped out of one trade, but we get our optimal entry lower down for, for Palantir. So again, like huge candles like this, 43% this week. Yes, that's a very bullish candle, but ultimately we have not really gone up from there. So if we're not going higher, it's typically because we need to go lower again. So this is kind of what 16 weeks of Palantir not going anywhere. That's four months. I know that this is a fan favorite and I do think that this goes back to the all time highs, but I would not be surprised for this thing to correct back down. Now, if this thing corrects down 20%, yes, that's likely going to mean that Robinhood gets stopped out. But remember, it's important then not to have too many positions that go in the same direction all at once. So the fact that we're looking lower down for Palantir is basically also to protect us from potential market downside. Now, I do want to re-emphasize why I think 1724 or 1725 is such an important level. So if I'm just zooming out here and I'll make it more obvious with just one horizontal level um, right there. So you see in May of 2021, that was a level of support where we've wicked and then went significantly higher. Then ultimately we got below that level and turned that level into resistance. And we stayed below that level for a very long period of time. So once we broke below 1725, it wasn't really until 567 days later that we got back above that level. Now, recently we've broken significantly above that level, but we've not necessarily tested this level maybe enough to confirm it as support. So that is a, a huge key level from the past where I would imagine that maybe we get there again and, and then we continue with it with a bigger picture uptrend for Palantir. And if we do go up from here, I mean, that's fine. Like I said, then uh, there's no need to be overly exposed in long positions. That's risky. Next week, we also got a lot of like at least uh, market moving events um, coming, which I'm not interested in, in the results of these events themselves, but I know that that's going to cause a lot of volatility regardless. So Palantir, I would say this is uh, actually rejecting from a key level. So 22, 29, that's the support up there. And then we've rested on that level and we broke below it. And to me, it seems like this week, we've basically run shy of that level. And this looks like a, a high and a lower high and potentially here locally, another lower high before making our way down to our level of interest and maybe holding there. Now, this is something like, I'm not gonna, I don't have this in my portfolio because I don't even think that it's all too unlikely actually that Palantir potentially goes down lower and, and tests the 13.56 level again. I really think that that is within the realm of possibilities because I know that a lot of people are overly long on this with stop losses all below these lows. And it, again, 
by the time that Palantir, say, goes to $13.56, that would imply a 37% drop. Now, that is not, I'm not alerting any shorts here, not at all. Like, that's not our interest here. We're just looking for the long options. But you would, would want to be at least like uh, making sure that you're prepared for that if it happens. So, uh, that's what I have to say about Palantir. I think 1724, yep, yeah, that's that first level. And then if it does go lower, just by looking at the chart, I would say 1356 is going to be the next the next level of interest. Um, you, you really cannot rule anything out. And just so price has gone from these levels all the way to $6 before. So while you're up here, you need to be way more cautious than while you're down here, of course. Mm -hmm. When the market has just sold off and is going sideways, it's relatively speaking way safer than after having pumped. Let's see. So from the bottom, uh, we've went up 364% uh, for a stock that is significant. And we're still up 260% from that bottom. So even if we come down to test 1724 there, we would still be up almost 200% from the bottom. That is not too unrealistic, right? I, I really think that this is not the area where I want to go long. And if you notice, like the price action here on Palantir, if I kind of quickly um, show you two things side by side. So the reason why we are long on Robinhood and not on Palantir here, if we have to choose one, is because Palantir has essentially made a top, a high in March. And it's come down and it's made a lower high. If you see Robinhood here, this has made a new high, well, basically this week. So this is going up the last weeks, and this is going down the last weeks. So this is where the strength is. Now, I want to see if I can do potentially something interesting here with the overlaying for a moment the Robinhood symbol on this chart. Um, let me see if I can get it in better. Right. Okay, good. Um, so the Robin Hood chart is basically represented here on my chart. You have the, the Palantir chart on the candlesticks, and then you have, relatively speaking, the Robin Hood chart. Now, if I'm looking and zooming in locally here to what these last few weeks have done, I can clearly see that, well, if this is the Robin Hood chart, right, the orange line, the orange line made a high and then came down and then made a low here, and now is going up and is basically curling up that means this move here means that over the last few weeks robin hood is the outperformer to palantir and if i'm looking at the robin hood chart it basically hasn't put in that that much of a significant move after our reaccumulation range so in some sense you could say that palantir is already a little bit further ahead and that the targets for palantir if i was long right i would have been taking profit here on palantir and I would be looking for a re-entry lower down. But for Robinhood, those same kind of levels that I'm looking at are not necessarily hit yet. So that's the whole reason behind being long Robinhood and being okay with that, but not necessarily wanting to add Palantir at least from here. So um, again, I think that could be indeed potentially a bull trap um, and I don't want to be a part of it, of course. Yeah, no, that, that's... Honestly, just even hearing like, you know, hearing the reasoning behind the analysis is, is super huge just for people who are getting involved to, you know, understand why they themselves may or may not want to get involved in, uh, in yeah. a certain way. Uh, and by, and no mean, by, yeah. by no means is this like perfect. I don't want to say like, oh, this is exactly how it is. Like, I mean, by all means, you got to do your own research. I'm just telling you how I see it on the charts. But that that's not a reason to just like blindly follow us, right? You, you got to be... Uh, on board with the with the why or have your own reasonings.